We've just finished one of our in-person Echo Days here in Bromley, South East London. We had delegates from all over the world this time, from the United States, Mexico, Switzerland, and of course from our home turf in the United Kingdom. One of the questions that came up and which often comes up is how to quantify left atrial dilatation. Of course, we have the infamous LAAO ratio, which you can do either by measurement or some people would like to just do subjectively, but we should always combine multiple measures. And one that people particularly like is the left atrial dimension from the right parasternal long axis view. If you want a ratio, you can use the aorta for this. So I'm going to show you now how you can obtain these two views and take those measurements. From your right parasternal long axis view, you want to try and optimize this for the left atrium. So we normally have our left atrium almost off the screen here. You want to centralize it. So you're going to do that by just pointing a little bit more towards the dog's head or the cat. And then you might find that you end up in this situation, which is part of the cardiac cycle is missing. You don't always notice because your eyes are very good at filling in the gaps, but if I just freeze this, you'll see that as I scroll through my frames now, part of the cardiac cycle, I'm completely missing the left atrium. Um, I could still measure it, but you want to just be mindful of that because often it will completely obscure the point. So in this frame, for example, I'm in uh, atrial systole, so it's at its smallest, but I want atrial diastole to measure from. So I'm scrolling forward where the left atrium is at its biggest and oops, it's gone. I've missed it completely. So you just need to be very, very careful that you are not losing the left atrium, either with respiration or just cardiac movement. So you might have to experiment finding different windows to see which is the best one. When you've got a good window, the other thing to be mindful of is the pulmonary vein. So you can see I've got a pulmonary vein up here, but I can easily lose that by just dropping the tail of my probe in towards the bed. So lifting the tail up, I have a pulmonary vein, dropping the tail down, it's disappeared. It's good to have landmarks every time. So I'm going to make sure I have that pulmonary vein in my view every time. Then I'm going to reduce my depth and now I can take my measurement. So I want that frame where the left atrium is at its maximum but the mitral valve is closed. And then I'm going to cut it in half. So I'm going to go from the interatrial septum here at its thinnest point usually and I'm going to go right across cutting that left atrium in half. I've got a measurement of 2.7 centimetres. Now if I want to get a ratio I can just twist my probe and switch to my outflow or my five chamber view bringing the aorta in. Now in this dog, this is a very tricky thing to demonstrate because she does not have a normal looking aorta. So I will show you on a normal dog, but just so you have the idea. Right now we're in diastole, so the aortic valve leaflets are closed. I'm gonna keep going forwards and then wait for that moment when they open. So there we go, so systole is beginning now and the aortic valve leaflets are at their maximum here. So this one is nice and flat as it opens. What you're going to do is measure from the hinge point of one aortic valve leaflet to the hinge point of the other, and that's gonna be your aortic dimension.